Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the biggest mistakes to avoid in Illusion Connect. Uh, a couple of these are a little bit basic, but I think there's going to be something for everyone to pick up from this one. Hopefully we got you covered, so let's get into it. Just before we get into it, we did actually reach 5,000 subscribers on this channel, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm pumped. Uh, so we are going to do what we've done on my main channel every 5,000, and we're going to do a $100 giveaway. So to join in the giveaway, basically, you just got to be subscribed to the channel and leave a comment on this video. And in about a week, I'll do a video and I'll record doing the, you know, the raffle draw of the winner. Only one entry per comment, so don't spam. You can say anything you want. doesn't matter. Tell me I suck, I'm cool with it. Uh, but yeah, and you'll go into the draw. All the detail stuff will be in the description. But uh, massive thank you for getting us to 5,000 subs on this channel. I really do appreciate it, but let's get into it. For the first one, we're over on the soft launch server because I'm a, it's a bit further progressed and it's actually unlocked these banners. So we do have these banners with the red tickets that you get from your daily quests. Now with these, you obviously want to save them up, use them on a select hero. For me personally, I'm going to go for Kasumi first up. But the thing about these is never do these as a single pull. Only save them up and do them as 10 pulls. The reason being, they put in a, a notice out on the soft launch server in the first week of the game saying that doing 10 single summons will not count to your rate up banners. So as you can see, it's like a step up banner at two times temples and seven times temples, you get the rate up. But if you do 20 singles, it's not going to give you the rate up. You've got to do them as 10 pulls. So never, never do these as singles unless you're just really addicted to summoning and can't resist the urge. But definitely <laughs> save them, do them as 10s, very key. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at gear. Now, I'm not going to go in depth into gear. I'm still working on all of the information and I will do a complete gear guide eventually. However, when we get SSR gear or any gear for that matter, uh, and we go forge and we upgrade and you need these duplicates to do it, you will eventually get some, I believe they're called gems or something. We'll just go here to the shop uh, so we can see one. We go to exchange. We go to gear and you can see here these honor gems now those can act as a replacement for a duplicate piece of gear in that upgrading process now just if you want a basic answer for now if you get these save them don't use them they're very very valuable and you want to save them until I'm hanging out to do this gear guide, but we will eventually do it. And I'll in that guide, I'll go through the kind of gear that you want to upgrade. But basically, there's some gear that is very unique in that you can't summon it. It's not in the normal banners and stuff like that. Summoning for gear is a whole nother topic, um, which I'll go into in a future video. But basically, all of the gear that you can see in here is not really worth upgrading with the gems because you will be able to get dupes of them much easier. I'll put up a couple screenshots uh, right now. As you can see, these falling butterfly shoes, um, they're going to have HP 2% uh, increase in battle. And then every action has a 10% chance of restoring 100 rage. Now, extra 100 rage is going to be really nice. So these are those unique types of gear that you want to end up be using them on, those gems, because you're not going to get this gear as often. So you're not going to have the duplicates to upgrade it. So that's why you want to save the gems. Here's another piece, 10% um, chance of returning to the card pile on death. So that basically basically means after the character dies they have a 10 percent chance to go back in and you can draw them into your hand again and play them again which is really really strong so definitely just hold on to those gems for now i don't feel like anyone unless you're a mega whale would be at the stage of needing to use them yet so just hold on to them as a basic thing and like i said i'll have a gear guide out in the future the next thing we want to look at is these idle rewards. Now, obviously, you can claim these as much as you like. However, the cards down the bottom here, the extra resource cards and stuff, don't go spamming them as soon as you have them. You want to wait until you're further progressed. You've got more You've got more per hour return on these before you use them. If you hit a roadblock where it's like you need crystals to upgrade things or you can't progress anymore because you need potions or you need gold, that's when you use them. Use them at a minimal amount to to get the progress that you need and then basically stop and then wait till you need that progress because if you just dump all these straight away it's going to be wasted in that if you don't if you say get an extra 50,000 gold but you only needed 10,000 that extra 40,000 if you waited longer could have been worth 60,000 so 
only use these cards down the bottom as you really need the resources. The next one applies to really early game players as well, and that is the daily trials. Now, we can see down here we have extra reward attempts. Um, I've got 0, 4, 0, 4, and 0, 4, because I've done them all. Now, with these, you can spam these for the extra resources that you need if you want, but in the first especially few days, you'll be progressing in campaign a lot, so you'll be running out of stamina very quick. So don't just dump your stamina into, into these to get the resources, because it will go very, very quick. You really wanna just hold out, bide your time, work through campaign, especially in those first few days. Eventually, you will get to the stage in the game where you can just dump your stamina on whatever you choose. Um, however, I definitely, for the early stages, um, particularly, you want to save the stamina for campaign progression, otherwise you might run out of stamina, and you can only do uh, the the five stamina refreshes per day, which means you, you might hit a point where you get capped. Just try to avoid it. But if you get to the end of the day, work out your time zone when the daily reset is, then you can go ahead and dump your stamina if you want, if you are refreshing. So it depends on the level of payment you're making into the game on how much you're refreshing and stuff like that everyone's going to be unique but just especially for those early stages don't don't waste it all and then not be able to play the game okay so for the next one we're going to go into the lineup now when we jump into our lineup we can have a look on the left here and see total energy now when we look at this when the team's total energy is less than or equal to max energy all allied units get plus 10 percent damage increase rate and damage resistance rate uh, total partner energy can be higher than max energy but you miss out on the bonus now if you want to upgrade this you're it's basically through the books in that um per, i can't even say the word you know your, your little housing place the books are going to increase that energy um on the total energy but try to avoid going over your total energy because you're going to lose some damage increases the other thing is especially for early on in the game when you're learning it i like having lower energy cost teams because it's going to let you play more cards and get used to the game a lot more. Um, I think a lot of people will fall into the trap of putting all the really strong units in their team that have really expensive costs on energy, and you just don't get a flow going with your team. So having a few low-cost um, partners in your team is really nice just to improve the flow of your team, get it happening, but also stay under that total energy rank and be able to get that damage increase and damage resistance increase. It's something that a lot of people may just overlook and not even look at it, but you know, an extra 10% damage dealt and 10% less damage taken can be really, really important in the game. So definitely just check out your energy cap and like i said we'll jump over here and show you uh in the housing where you can upgrade the books the reason i don't i haven't upgraded my books yet is because one they're very expensive on the crystals so as you can see i'd get two extra on my uh, max energy for each one but they're very very expensive and keeping in mind you need these crystals to upgrade your um your leader as well so i've chosen to upgrade my leader my team has a very low max energy once i unlock the 10th slot is probably when i'm going to have to go and pick these books up because then i'll have an extra unit in my team beefing up that energy cost so that's when i'll go ahead and do it but for now i don't need it because my team is under that limit so i have no need to buy these but eventually i definitely will buy them and for the final tip, uh, this is really applicable to free-to-play players if you're trying to min-max a little bit. Um, for everyone else, I still think it's a good practice to do just to maximize your efficiency because you're going to get a lot of partners that you will want to max um, the relationships with because it will, or the intimacy, uh, because it will go ahead and give you extra stats on them so you want to spread it out and get the most bang for your buck so when you go ahead and gift it may be tempting to go to your favorite waifu and just dump all of the items the gifts to them but what i do is i only gift the characters that i'm using um and i only gift them when it is the red double heart so i'm not using this character so i'm not going to do it but just so you can see you've got the red heart here and just above it you can see just above my head it's going to say upgrade 20 plus 10 so she likes that item meaning she's going to get a bonus to it the blue ones are going to give you seven plus three and then the um the green ones are going to give you three plus one which isn't too bad whereas you normally just only get the 20 for the purples so you're getting a 50 percent extra return on those purples which is really really nice and that's what you really want to focus on trying to get um i don't know if i'll find someone i've just got to find a character with something that they dislike which is hard to find at the moment apparently they all like everything let's jump to you see if you've got one 
here we go and so see you can see here with the purple ones with the broken heart that's going to give you minus return so you definitely don't want to be using these so once again it might get tempting just to just to get the intimacy because you want to unlock the rest of the um <laughs> the rest of the information on your waifus you don't get sucked in all i'm saying is don't get sucked in just play the <laughs> I can't even take it seriously at the moment. Let's get out of that. Anyway, d don't, you know what I'm saying. Just save it, just save it. Use only the red ones because then you're gonna maximize the efficiency of your items um, and upgrading those partners that you really wanna upgrade. Um, like I said, you got a lineup of 10, you're probably gonna get extra extra partners that you're gonna use in niche situations. You'll probably have a core team of maybe 15 to 20 partners by the end that you're gonna use frequently. So you'd rather have spread it out evenly and then have them all upgrading at the same time as opposed to, you know, one that you got all the info on. Anyway, guys, that is gonna be it for this one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.